Hi everyone and welcome back to Voice Calling Out. I have so much to talk about, especially in the light of the last couple of weeks where I have been sick and I have been tired and I have been sick and tired in some points and um, just rolling with the punches with all the things that life and especially the situation right now is throwing at us. Uh, but I prepared a very special topic for you today and that is just kind of figuring out a little bit our associations about what mental health means and what it means for different people. And I do this because I think it's kind of fun, but also very important to be able to kind of make the difference of what different people mean uh, with the word mental health and how does that look like so that whenever we are in a situation where we have to make decisions about our mental health, that we are best informed and know how to take how to make those decisions those decisions in a way that it's best for us and for our mental health. But before I jump into this video, I want to tell you thank you so much for showing your support by subscribing to my channel and by following my Instagram account. This means the word for me. So if you feel if you're new around here and you feel like these kind of topics would be would add some kind of uh, benefit to your life and you enjoy listening to me talking about mental health and and slash or spirituality and different kind of philosophical topics around mental health, then by all means do subscribe to my channel click the notification so that you receive a notification every time that I'm uploading a new video and follow me on Instagram uh, because I post some nice things around there too. Some years ago when at university we would be having um, a course about cultural differences, I heard this joke kind of that whenever an, an American starts um, a speech or just like like a presentation um, they would start with a joke to captivate everybody's attention and just kind of like create a sense of uh, light lightness in the room whilst uh, a European especially a German or a Swiss kind of person would be more inclined to start the definition so that they all of us know that we are on the same page so I guess you know which part I am and I <laughs> Even if I would try, I would be so bad at telling jokes. Believe me, you should be thankful that I am do not doing jokes on this channel. So definitions. I For this video, I will just kind of try and uh, simplify a lot uh, so that we can understand, so that we can talk about these kinds of things in a general way. And so I will be talking about what mental health means from a medical perspective. It's kind of, I just chose this word to put everything in it uh, and what it means from a spiritual perspective. And again, I just chose this word to put everything that we understand under these kinds of things. So depending on who you ask, let's say if you ask a psychiatrist or a psychologist who has been trained at the university or a researcher, um, when you ask about what mental health is for them, what associations they would have with this word, um, they would probably say something like, chemical imbalances in the brain, um, something that can be regulated with medicine and uh, psychotherapy. And by psychotherapy, they mean um, a structured, uh, organized, manualized and standardized uh, way of going through the symptoms and doing something about those symptoms so that um, so that the person who comes in um, with, with a, a certain cluster of clinical symptoms after a certain amount of weeks or months they would be able to go out uh, of the therapy session without those symptoms and i in my life and across my career path i had the chance to work with learn from and just uh, do therapy with people who have been formally trained and, and doing these kinds of things but i have also had the chance to to see mental health from a kind of a different perspective and and that is how when i first started to study psychology my associations with mental health were more like something that I would almost describe as, as, as a spiritual thing. My associations were with mental health means that you grow in your life, that you struggle with different things and then you, and then you kind of learn to, to deal with hard things and then you become more yourself. So that is what I kind of call the, the spiritual um, way of defining mental health, if you wish. In my practice and in my private conversations with people all over the professional specter, spectrum or just all over the board, <laughs> uh, I realized that when we talk about mental health, 
um, we mean so many different things about uh, with this word. And that is not a bad thing. Um, however, I do think that it's, it's worthwhile to take, to take the time and to think a little bit about how these different professionals approach mental health, because I think these kinds of things complement each other and they're not against each other. So actually, my first encounter with mental health with, was uh, because I started to go to counseling with a Christian nun who was trained to do counseling um, and has kind of first brought me to the awareness that um, all the things that happen in your life do need to kind of find their way to be worked through and, and, um, and worked with if you want to kind of keep growing and keep becoming the person that you were meant to be. She was the person who first taught me that um, a healthy spirituality means that you have to look into yourself, uh, uncover your past, uncover your wounds, and to keep on allowing um, God to heal these wounds and to work through your unhealthy patterns so that you can truly be free to live a life where you uncover your full potential. So that was my very, very first encounter with mental health about 10 years ago. and. That is how I started living my spirituality. That is also how I went into the whole business of also starting a business, also studying uh, psychology and, and helping others. Um, and then I realized at university that um, this aspect is something that nobody really talks about. Very, very few people, just very niche down uh, places. But I think this is very, very important. And this is the conversation that I'm having for this channel, that it's not just one or the other, it's a complex thing. Um, and obviously I am a huge proponent of um, mental health aided by spirituality. So in my whole story of healing, this is how it started. It started through spirituality and through looking into the more unhealthy patterns. And then it went into academia and, and learning about also the whole physical part of mental health and chemical imbalances and all that. And even later on, I found out, uh, surprise, surprise, that um, spirituality, religiosity, belief uh, are so um, protective factors against, uh, against mental illness. And I do believe this must, might be one of the factors why. So because my journey was like this, I, for me, it was always something that really went together. At times I would find difficulty in describing why, um, why these two things are for me, like just maybe the two sides of the same coin and then I realized that maybe one of the things that is making making it really hard for us nowadays to talk about spirituality in the context of mental health is because we have been so and I'm sorry but I really believe this is true indoctrinated in a certain way of thinking and and that is that everything that is is material and there's no need to talk about anything other than that and ju let's just talk about what we can see what we can measure um, and that's it. And there are so many academics proposing, proposing the, the idea that religious faith and spirituality is not, n not just not good for anything, but even harmful. And that is just really something that has, has no basis in my, in my view. Um, and it, it is, I think it is really, really harmful to, ex to expel the whole aspect of spirituality from the conversation because we all have a certain kind of spirituality that can be of aid in our recovery, in our mental health. And, and it is actually spirituality that talks about growth and development and, and uh, unfolding your potential, as opposed to what the medicine aspect talks about, which is just, you have symptoms, how do we get you to the point where you don't have any symptoms anymore? Which is really, really important in a life where you want to be growing and developing your full potential. Um, but I do think that if we exclude that, that, that if we exclude the whole big picture is really just turned down. So, in a nutshell, here is how I see how mental health and personal development slash growth works together, should work together. Um, and I hope that wherever you are on your own journey um, can, can profit from this kind of systematic view so that you can know where you are, know what you need and, and see what, what you can do to get yourself to a place where you are getting better. So. Um, in the academia at the moment, there is um, what we do is research to recognize what are the factors that help us be protected from mental illness or make us more prone to develop a mental illness. These factors can be genetic ones, can be social cultural ones, um, can be personality uh, traits, 
things that happen in your life and, and all sorts of stuff like, like uh, lifestyle go into. So all of the stuff that we learn from this side is clearly a huge, 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 huge thing to be having in mind and to know, to learn about, to, to take into consideration and to work with. Uh, also from the clinical aspect, you have the, uh, the amazing body of, of evidence and research that puts symptoms into symptom clusters so that we have kind of an idea of uh, what a depression looks like and what an anxiety uh, disorder looks like, even though there's much overlap that we can know kind of more or less what are the kind of ways uh, a mental disbalance or a chemical disbalance or just something that, that is not really working in your life um, manifests itself. Uh, which are a very, very important information to know and to, and to look for. And on the other side, um, religious teachers and spiritual leaders and even philosophers have been talking on and on and on for centuries, way, way before we had the words mental health and the word psychology and all that, about questions like, what is the meaning of life? And what are humans uh, meant to be? And, and what are they not meant to be? And uh, who is God? And why does that, that why does the answer to this question matter? And so on and so forth. Um, how can we live a fulfilled life in the light of the, of the way we were meant to be, created to be? Or these are the things that kind of give the whole motivation, of course, um, for us to 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 keep on doing the hard work of going through maybe therapy or, or, or counseling or whatever that helps us um, do and become the, the people that we are and we are meant to be. That is kind of like the basis for me. With my patients, I try to see, I try to figure out what are their basic motivations and what are the things that they strive to become and to be in their lives. I, as a mental health professional, am not only there to kind of therapy away their symptoms, but to kind of put in the work to, to see where they are their strongest and what are the things that are, are good and and worthy to be st strive and worthy of their strife in their whole process of healing. In more than just one occasion, I find that th these are the really the underlying questions that maybe provoke a mental health episode. Maybe one of the most easy or the most common example would be that let's say someone does not have the belief that they are able to deal with everything that, that comes uh, to them in their lives. This is something that happens on a deeply personal, spiritual level. This is a spiritual belief uh, about yourself and about the, the way the world works and the way you work and the way you are supposed to be or not supposed to be. And that can manifest itself through, you know, maybe a depression or for someone else, um, obsessive compulsive disorder or for someone else through something else entirely. Um, and, and for me, I feel like it is really, really important to get to those core questions at the same time as we also strive to, uh, to linger the symptoms, because those are the things that, that make us make our living hard on a day to day basis. Um, if you're having panic attacks all the time, that then you will not be able to, to, to work on what makes those panic attacks keep on coming. So that's why. I fully uh, am on the side of medicine and spirituality working hand in hand and side to side and seeing which one is more needed at, at any kind of moment in the patient's or client's life. Uh, and I see this wonderfully being able to work together if we are willing to see the future and if we're willing to see uh, what are the things that, um, that we need in, in certain moments. Because if you're having panic attacks, maybe Praying will help a little bit, but not necessarily always. Um, but if those panic attacks come from, you know, whatever kind of circumstance in your life that, that create an existential spiritual crisis in your life, then it is worth it to, aside of getting medication and, and proper psychological care, therapy, whatever it's for maybe, um, that you also, in its due course and at the other time when you're able to actually uh, have the mental energy to work on these kinds of questions, to ask yourself these kinds of questions, and to enroll spiritual help from spiritual readers, from pastors, from, from spiritual counselors, um, even books, which is my favorite way to do it. And the reason I feel so strongly about this and I want to, to raise my voice for this is because um, I think the more we 
close our eyes to a big picture reality, uh, the more we are doomed to do the same mistakes over and over again. And I think some of us are really more vulnerable to becoming mentally ill, while others of us are more vulnerable to becoming physically ill. And um, we may have amazingly competent and trained therapists and and psychiatric uh, psychiatrists and, and medical doctors to, to to take care of our body and our physical reality. But if we do not enroll the same kind of competence of, to, from people to take care of our spiritual realities, then it might be that we, we think we are okay, but actually just going in circles. And the same thing can be true the other way around too, that um, there are people who might think that the only way to live is to be overly spiritual and just enroll spiritual um, tools in their healing and, and just pray everything away, but maybe at some point you will need to kind of take into consideration your physical aspect and, and all the things that, that go with living in a body that works in a certain way, uh, because that is important too. So I really, really hope that through my channel I will be provide a little bit of snippets and um, nourishment from both sides, because I have been privileged enough to be able to train myself in both of these aspects and I realize how much this gives in my day-to-day -day practice and also in looking at myself and just ask and whenever I am confronted with a personal problem I I see how important it is that I am able to ask myself the questions from all the spec all the spectrum of, of human functioning and there's so so many times where I find that you know the the reason for a headache uh, lies in a personal conflict maybe my symptom is anxiety but but the reason for that is an existential thing that who would have thought. So I truly believe that this is bringing some sort of blessing in your life. Uh, wherever you are, on your spiritual temple, mortal, do let me know in the comments below. Um, if, you, if you find that this way of thinking is helpful for you, I would be so, so, so honored if that would be the case. And if you have specific questions or feedback, comments, um, requests from me with specific topics, um, do let me know and I will try my best to um, help you on your journey. And until next time, I'm wishing you all the best, take good care of yourselves and see you next Saturday, hopefully. Bye!